Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. And this week on The Dean Show, before the youth get wild and before the ship sails, we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing at home, raising our children the proper way so we don't lose our children because it's a jungle out there. So our next guest, Sheikh Yassin, here from the UK in Dallas. So we'll see how his UK accent with the Dallas cowboy accent, how this all fits in. We're going to meet him when we come back here on The Dean Show. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is 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 The Dean Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are y'all doing? Alhamdulillah, fine. Did you pick up on the Texas accent here and while you're in Dallas? No, not yet. You still got that nice uh, British accent. Well, yeah, yeah. MashaAllah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, great yourself. How long you been in the States here? I've been here for six years. Born in? Born in the UK. In, in the UK? In London, yeah. How's the transition been? It's been pretty peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the hustle and bustle life of London, the busy life. Um, Choosing a suburb over a city is pretty peaceful. Um, alhamdulillah, Allah sent me to the right community. I have a good team, people that I work with, good community. Alhamdulillah, things have been going from strength to strength. So the time is short. Just brief introduction about yourself. Mm -hmm. You've memorized the verbatim word of God. Mm -hmm. You've been studying this deen for mm -hmm. a long time. You've been, mm -hmm. tell us, continue from there. Well, um, I was born and raised in England. Um, to parents of an Indian region and um, uh, started memorizing the Quran from a very young age and uh, after memorizing the Quran I enrolled at the Islamic seminary to study Islamic sciences after graduating from there I went on to complete my masters in Islamic studies at the University of London whilst also serving as an imam at a local mosque in London in 2006 I made the big move across the pond and came to the United States of America upon the advice of Imam Yusuf another great senior imam of Dallas and um, ever since then I've been serving as an Imam here. Now how did you overcome? Were you shielded? Were you protected? I mean as a youth growing up in London you got some wild things going on. People mm -hmm. got wild over there. Drugs, alcohol, gangs, mm -hmm. gaming, all sorts of mm -hmm. things that are away from the organic way of living. Mm -hmm. We want to live a pure life, a good life, a life that's pleasing to the Creator of the heavens and earth. Now you went in the good direction but many they don't make it that far. What kind of pressures were you under that you overcame so the youth, they can kind of relate and say, you know what, if he could do it, I can do it too. I was quite fortunate because my parents were always guided towards Islam, alhamdulillah, you know, all praise to Allah. And, uh, you know, the upbringing from the home is very important. My father was very conscious about our Islamic upbringing, especially performances of prayers. And, you know, when, when a person performs their prayers and all sorts of disciplines come into their life, and um, I was fortunate enough that my parents guided me towards the studies of Islam. So from a very young age I was in Islamic seminary, so I was guard, guarded and protected from, from the, um, the trials and tribulations that most of the youth go through in England. Having said that, I would come home and on, on the weekends and I would see my friends and uh, people that I grew up with associating in things or, or um, you know, engaging in activities that were contrary to their upbringing or contrary to the Islamic faith. And um, at times it was a challenge because you'd be invited towards those activities or doing things and um, it's always been a challenge and, and that challenge will never end because of the freedom afforded to the youth and um, in, in the countries that we're living in so it's alhamdulillah you know all praise to Allah was protected from that I don't think anybody can be protected or saved unless Allah saves them and um, of course it starts from home there's they have to be have a strong structure in the house strong Islamic system and also the community plays a big role in the upbringing of a child and, and um, to provide them that environment that atmosphere where they could be secure in their deen and they could uh, practice Islam securely now before we go into you giving us some advice for the people who want to start a family have a family and before that as I said the ship sails you know we want to prepare it before the children get out there in the real world we want to prepare them for the challenges of life. So at what point did you consciously make a decision? Because people have to come, you go from being a young man, a child to an adult, and you have to make a conscious decision to submit to the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
So at what point in your life, okay, your father, your parents are teaching you Islam, but at what point were you like, because even some parents, they teach them Islam, but they're like, still, they wander off. But others, they stop and think, and they're like, you know what, what my parents are teaching me really is the truth. It's based on proof, evidences, and they even didn't wholeheartedly get into it. Did you have that point in your life? I think that point came when I was uh, closer to puberty, and uh, after completing the Quran, you know, memorizing the Quran, not understanding it, but still wanting to learn what the Quran actually means. Um, you know, Shaitan did attack me and Shaitan told me, you know, you don't need to go to seminary. Um, you might become proud and arrogant if you become an Islamic scholar. You might, you know, Shaitan tried many, very, many tr tricks and many avenues that Shaitan attacks a person, especially a student of knowledge is attacked greatly by Shaitan. So um, it was, it was um, at, that, at that point that I actually consulted my, my teachers, my shuyukh, my, my, my advisors, my mentors, whom you know, I, 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 um, I'm indebted to. And, and um, I have to pray for them. Allah Ta'ala blesses them. God blesses them for all their efforts. And it was at that time that they guided me. You know, this is, this is the, the point where you need to start reflecting and realizing God's favors upon you. You know, Allah's chosen you for this path and you have to remain on this path and stay on it and stick to it. So it was, it was at that point after c c memorizing the Quran before enrolling at Islamic Center close to the age of puberty, like four, 13, 14, when I had that great uh, transition or that, that moment in my life where I had to make a decision, do I go back to school now after completing Hibs of Quran and memorization of Quran or do you now go on to learn what the Quran means, try and apply it in your lives and benefit others. It was at that point in my life that I had to really think about you know, what, what direction I want to take in life and you know, you know, I, I never lost faith or I never, had, um, I never lost trust in what my parents taught me, I always knew this was the truth. And you know, I was fortunate enough that God guided me towards that. How important is it? Because we know that's one of the verbatim mm -hmm. word of God is the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's been sent down for all of mankind, and it's a guidance, a healing for everybody. So one of the miracles is that we have it in its original, memorized by millions. Mm -hmm. But some will memorize the Quran, but how important is it to memorize it, but memorize it with understanding? How important is that? I think it's extremely important because Allah Ta'ala, Allah mentions in the Quran that we revealed this book and it's blessed so that you can reflect upon its meanings. You know, in, in other parts of the Quran, Allah says, God says, that we, we made this Quran easy for remembrance. So how does one take heed from it or take lessons from it, derive a, a, a way of life or a source of life from it unless they understand it or truly reflect upon its meanings? So I think it's extremely important that when, when a person memorizes the Quran, he has to understand or she has to understand that this is their path of life now. God has chosen them for the Quran to be a true ambassador of the Quran, a holder of the Quran, a protector and preserver of the Quran. Not just preserving its literal words, but also preserving its meanings in actions, in, in conveying its teachings, in, 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 in teaching it to others. So I, I think um, it's extremely important that people understand. And that's why you will find people that don't learn the meaning of the Quran after memorizing it. They don't have true value for the Quran and you will find Unfortunately, amongst those that have memorized the Quran, although they are in esteemed position because Allah selected them from his, for His words and for preserving His words, that they don't tend to live the Islamic lifestyle that's required from the, the, a person that has learned the Quran. Now, you've seen that? Yes, I have. What advice do you have for those who are inspiring to memorize the Quran? Mm -hmm. Their parents maybe pushed them to do it, but mm -hmm. they're dealing with this dilemma now. M my advice to them is that your journey doesn't end once you've finished Qul A'udhu Bi Nas, the last chapter of the Quran. Your journey has just begun because now you, you have a, a responsibility and duty to preserve the Qur'an in its true sense and to convey its meanings to the people. So this is a path that Allah has chosen for you and if you neglect this path then you're, it's like you're neglecting the fate that Allah has prepared for you. And I, I think it's a, it's, a grave response, it's a huge responsibility of parents as well. And once you've chosen your, your children for this path, learning the Qur'an, preserving the Qur'an in, in, in its words, then they should allow them to excel and to, to learn a, a deen furthermore and not just stop there. Has anyone asked you, let's say, from our brothers in humanity, when you mention the Qur'an and say, well, how can I know that this is from the Creator? How do I know? Why do you guys say this is a miracle? Well, in short, what, how can people be confident that this is from the Creator? Because the Qur'an um, is unchanged, unaltered, unedited. It's in, in the original form of its revelation. Allah Ta'ala, God revealed this to the Prophet Muhammad, and the source of its revelation is known, it's solid, came from God through Gabriel to Muhammad, whereas other scriptures the same cannot be said of them. The preservation of the Quran, rigorous efforts were made by earlier Muslims to preserve its, its words. And you know, this um, system of hifz and memorization is one method that God chose for its pre preservation. So it's a, it's a very, um, and nothing, you'll, you'll find no contradictions in the book. 
you'll find that the, it's, it's in the highest language, it's a miraculous, it, the words are miraculous, revealed at a time when people were proud about their language, took great pride in the, in the way that they um, presented their language skills, and the Prophet Muhammad being unlettered, not knowing how to read or write, was conveying these words to the people with such, with such authenticity and with, with, such, um, with such strength and, and with such authority. It, it, there's, there's no doubt in the mind that this is the word of God. Doesn't, before we go to break, doesn't the creator of the heavens and the earth, in Arabic we say Allah, doesn't he identify himself that he's the one that revealed it, he's going to protect it? Yes, yes. This is he's a guarantee, from, like stamp yeah, of approval. This is, that, yes, this is a verse of the Quran where God says, we, re, we revealed the Quran as a remembrance and we will protect it. Yeah. And preserve it's a it. Tell me this one, is it true that there's a challenge in there? If someone says it's not from God, go ahead, find one contradiction. Yes, exactly. Like you this, see in yeah. like other scriptures. Yeah. yeah. The Quran says that if you um, do, they not do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it was from other than Allah, they would find many contradictions in the. And the Quran challenges people that if this is the word of man, bring something like it. That's right, and that's where we're going to be giving you the information on how you can save your family. It's going to be from the verbatim word of God and the teaching of the last and final message sent to the plain kind of Prophet Muhammad. We'll be right back with more. So stay tuned here on the Dean Show. It's like, when did you think that you had no purpose? Are you worthless? The value comes from purpose. Your purpose in life is to worship the Creator, not worship your desires and self, not worship social pressure, the celebrity culture, but worship the thing that's much higher and transcendent, above and beyond. By worshiping God and seeking His pleasure, you get pleased. So you have double pleasure. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Yassin and we are humbly trying to really relay to the people out there you know the message, the beauty of the purpose of life that's from the Creator it's not an organized religion organized by man or men it's indeed a way of life, a system that's for all mankind and even in here it tells you how to raise your family how to bring up righteous children so you have memorized this book, we talked about it being a miracle, so the person now that got to hear Qur'an, miracle from Creator, might continue to listen. And you've also, you went through those pressures, you know, you have some experience. So what advice do you give for parents before the time comes and he comes knocking on your door, because you're the Imam, mm -hmm. and they come knocking on your door and say, hey, my son's joined the gang, hey, my, my son, he just smacked me upside the head, <laughs> my son's cursing, using, he, he's, I didn't teach him French, but he's, you know, He's mm -hmm. speaking French, you know what kind of French I'm saying, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So before it comes to that, what advice do you give the parents? I think it's, it's important for parents to reflect once they make this decision of having kids and bringing kids into this world, children into this world, what their responsibility is as parents. You know, we have, a, we have uh, rights, I mean, the children have rights upon us and we have duties that we have to fulfill related to the physical upbringing of a child and we're all aware of that. Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter, everybody's fulfilling that right of the child, raising them, nurturing them, nourishing them, you know, when it comes to nutrition and, and giving them rest and giving them a, a home, and giving them clothes to wear. But when it comes to the direction in life that they need to lead the spirituality of the child, nurturing that, molding them on a, on a way of life, that's where many people fail. So it's really important that parents change their direction in life before they start to bring children into this world. Because having children is a great responsibility and duty for any person. It's not, and it's not just the, the physical responsibilities of the child that we're account, accountable for. But in front of Allah, we are shepherds. We have to um, lead our flock towards the right direction. And that destination is Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. So it's important that we make this conscious de decision to choose the right way of life before we bring children into this world. And once we do, we have to we have to bring Islam into our heart, lives wholeheartedly, not this pick and choose Islam that we're living by in, 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 in present times. It's not a buffet, huh? Exactly. It's not a buffet meal where you can go, you know, I like buffets by the way. Me too. Um, yeah. Eat all you want, you know. And that's why, you know, that's a Texan way, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Allah brought me to the, lo the, the right place. Anyway, Gosh so going, uh, going back to the question, you know, it's, we, we, we choose and pick and choose what we want to follow. And Allah says regarding the people before Muslims, before Islam, they, they used to say we believe in the in some of it and we will reject some of it. Not min al wa naqfur al And we don't want to live that sort of lifestyle. Allah says, enter Islam fully. So when we bring children this as well, we have to realize that we can't have this pick and choose Islam. We can't be uh, um, hypocritical in our, in our perception of deen. Otherwise, if we guide our children towards something and we're not practicing ourselves, you know, they, they would, never have, would never, never have an effect on our, on our children. Therefore, I, I, I think that 
parents need to be role models number one they need to have the right direction uh, in their own lives after they've adopted those qualities and they have a, a very strong structure in their own lives and they're molded around their lives are molded around Deen children will pick up from that instantly you know if, 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 if the, your day starts with Fajr Salah you know if your day ends with Isha you know, if your if your if your um, structure around the house is modelled around the prayers timings, if you go out to the mall, you go out to grocery shopping, but you're conscious about prayer timings, and this is just one one example of prayers itself. And then speaking about Allah on the dinner table, speaking about Allah in ev everywhere you go, you go into the car with your child, you speak to them about Allah, you, you ask them about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, like Luqman in the Quran when he speaks to his son and he says to him that if there was a mustard seed hidden somewhere, who would bring it? Who would know about it? Only Allah would know about it. O oh son, perform your prayers, enjoy in good, forbid evil, be patient. And he's advising his son all of these different advices about his character. Do not, be, do not be haughty, do not be proud, do not be arrogant, do not boast. So this conversation has to take place. It's a, it's a question of impressions. You know, our children, they're on, online most of the time. They go to schools 40 hours a week. Um, they go to tuitions, they go everywhere. And whatever they see around them, they're, impression, they're impressionable. And if we're not having these conversations with our children, we're not speaking to them about Allah, about chastity, morality, you know, the, 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 the values that we want to instill in them as, as, as Muslims, then somebody else is having that conversation with them. Somebody else is taking that precious time away from us. Today, unfortunately, we're not spending enough time with our children and time is a huge factor. How many times do we, do we, do we go out with our daughters as, as, as fathers? You know, how many fathers take their daughters out and say, you know, for a day out on a Saturday, She's looking for that when she's a teenage girl. She's looking for a father, somebody, a, a male figure to take her out and teach her how a woman should be treated. You know, to, 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 to give her some quality time, to ask her how her day has been, how, who are her friends, what does she like in life, you know, what are her, 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 the things that she likes, what are her dislikes. How many fathers know that about their daughters? How many, sons know, uh, how many fathers know that about their sons? You know, they, they shouldn't be living in fear of their parents. There should be some respect and parents need to be parents. I'm not saying parents need to be friends. But they have to have these conversations with their children. They have to talk to them all the time, constantly remind them. Not impose, not force, but from a very young age, talk to them about Allah, talk to them about their direction in life, talk to them about morality, about chastity, about the Prophet Muhammad and Read stories with them, ta'aleem in the house. I think it's so important for the structure of a Muslim household. Five minutes a day is extremely effective. Read the book Hayat al-Sahaba, stories of the Sahaba. Read the book Riyad al-Salihin, Gardens of the Pious. You know, just read from there two, three ahadith every day, narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Relate to them stories of, from the Quran about the Prophets. Talk to them, how they, have these conversations with them and you'll find it'll, it'll, they'll be impressioned by this. They will have a great impression of Islam and inshallah it will lead to a strong structure in the, in, in the household inshallah. Also the community plays a huge role in this and, and, and one of the differences I find between US and UK and I don't, this isn't a question, I know you didn't ask this question but I think one of the main differences I found was that in England there was a strong um, uh, educational structure for, for all Muslim kids, all Muslim kids in UK growing up 90% of them I would say enroll at a local masjid after school 5 to 7 on a daily basis during the school year and in fact even summer holidays we weren't allowed off and they went there they learned Quran of course but they also learned Islam they learned the kitab they learned fiqh they learned hadith narrations of the Prophet Muhammad they learned seerah the biography of the Prophet Muhammad and, and it was a structure it, every child went through whereas in the US we don't have this structure we have Sunday school even that is some places it's strong some places it's weak many children are lost mm -hmm. many children are lost uh, we're, we almost got to go to break so in short I'm going to ask you some more questions I have a lot more to ask you but you know it's sad that the time is always short, so if you can try to get everything out that I throw at you to the people. And the next question, I want to know how important is it that we teach our family the pure way of life? The pure way of life that was sent from the Creator. I know we love our culture and our customs from back home, but now we brought our families here to America, and now we're teaching back home culture. And now, how much of it? Where's the thin line that we don't cross? Because at the end, the children like, and my parents have been teaching me 70% culture and 20% Islam or whatnot. For instance, I'll give you just one example. For instance, we know that the dowry that's for the what? The the girl. The, the girl. But you, it's sad to say some people are taking a, cost, uh, a custom mm -hmm. and they do it for the what? For the yeah. for the man, right? Mm -hmm. So these customs and cultures that conflict now with Islam, mm -hmm. where's the burden? How do we know? You know, so we don't overwhelm the kids. And at the end, 
you know, Islam is something that changes a person for the better. It's the best self-defense from gambling, from alcohol, from all the evil vices. So how do we make sure we're doing it God's way, not our desires? I think education is really important. I think many people that come from, from other countries and they settle in this country and they choose to, to raise a family here, they themselves are unaware, uneducated in Islamic matters. And they, they are, um, you know, they, they practice culture and they're, not, they're, not, they're unaware that the, the cultural practices that they adhere to have no basis in Islam. So I think education starts from the parents and of course the masjid, the imam, the shuyukh, the, the scholars, they have a, a leading role to play in this where they have the, the, you know, they have the platform, the mimbar, the, the pulpit on a weekly basis addressing thousands of people to address some of these challenging issues uh, where many people need to be educated on the, on the status of women in Islam, the status of, of, of women and uh, the status of youth in Islam. You know. So many, so many different cultural um, problems that we're having or we're facing need to be addressed on, um, uh, from the masjid, from the, from the pulpit. Um, if the parents are, themselves are uneducated on these matters, then it's very hard for them to teach pure Islam to their children. Get to know your deen. Exactly. Get to know yes. who your creator is. Yes. What he wants from yes. you, that is the key yes. right there. Because and, and, you know, some people say, look, Allah said Iqra, mm -hmm. right? what was revealed, so I'm, I got to get the PhD. So yeah. do we get things, okay, get that, but get the knowledge of the deen first? Knowledge of the deen is essential, it's for the hereafter. Yeah. You, know, you, can, you can educate worldly masses, which is your responsibility, but we're all going to die one day, and the reality is we're going to face our creator and our master. And if we don't know our deen, then you know, we're setting ourselves up for failure. All the degrees ain't going to help then, right? No, it won't help. We'll take a break, we'll be right back with more here on the Dean Show. You think these things are going to bring you happiness? You know why you keep going back to the club, and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. Fiction. It's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy? You're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. You really are. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Yassin. Now, let's talk to the, to the youth. Now, the parents, we talked about them doing their role, connecting them with the Creator, educating them, spending family time, quality time. How about for the youth now, they've kind of, they haven't had that. They're tuning in, their friends have turned their life around, and they're trying to call their friends to goodness. They're sitting watching the show, but they don't think it's cool to be a Muslim. They don't, they think it's more cool to, quote Lady Gaga instead of quoting the Prophet, you know, how, what, what do you got to mm -hmm. say to them? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't take um, a scientist or a rocket scientist to figure out that way of life is, is, um, is destructive. I mean, if we look at celebrity lifestyles today, you don't find any happiness in any of their, in their lives. I mean, you find Whitney Houston just committed, uh, well, overdose, and um, Lindsay Lohan's in, in rehab, you know, Britney Spears was in rehab. So we, we, this is what we know about celebrity lifestyles, and um, there's no happiness, there's no, um, that sort of lifestyle is destructive. When, when there's no God in your life, when there's no monotheism, no tawheed in your life, there is no purpose, sense of purpose in your life. What are you working for? What are you living for? So my message to the youth that want to aspire towards that sort of lifestyle, and, and they, they think the Islamic lifestyle is uncool, how long is it cool for to be cool? You know, mm -hmm. quote unquote. I mean, you're going to age one day, we're all going to age. I mean, today somebody told me I'm an uncle because now I have three kids. I'm only 30 at the end, uh, and I don't feel like an uncle. But um, we're all going to age, and if we aspire to the wrong things from now, we don't, we're setting ourselves up for failure later on. So my, my message to the youth is that choose a role model whose way of life is, is fulfilling. It's satisfactory. Why are we finding so many people flocking to the religion of Islam? Why are people finding eternal peace in the religion of Islam? Why are people finding eternal peace in the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Why are we not studying Islam deeply? Why are we not looking into this lifestyle? 
rather than being influenced by by other things, by pressured by other things. So I would advise the youth to to study, to read, to to connect with their local masjids, to the, to other Muslim youth, and, and look into that lifestyle and, and 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 read the merits of it, and they'll find peace and tranquility in their lives. Death is a reality. It's death. And after death, the day of judgment, reality. Mm -hmm. Hellfire is a reality. Paradise, mm -hmm. and these things are a reality that we're going to have to. What we do in this life will be accountable. So at the end. Hellfire Paradise, is this what all the messengers of God taught? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we got to get it right now? Exactly, definitely. We, it's a reality when every, the discussion of hell and heaven is, is, is as, old as, the discussion, uh, as old as the creation of man. You know, as, soon as, uh, as long as man has been in this world, the discussion of heaven and hell took place. It's a reality, it's undeniable. Nobody can reject it. Therefore, we have to you know, uh, practice and, and adhere to the teachings that will take us towards paradise refrain from the hellfire. Last closing comments and suggestions. A, one, real briefly, we got women left to the parents or struggling with their children and the children who are really, you know, having a hard time growing up here, you know, so much temptation, so many things just sucking their mind away, they get caught up in all the different things of the tantalizations of this life and they're having a hard time to submit. Mm -hmm. What do you got to say? Well, to the parents, my, my message is that if you, you know, continue trying, make dua, supplicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to God to help you in this path raising children. Everybody needs the help of God. Nobody can do it without the help of God and the guidance of God. And God guides whom He wishes. Nobody can guide whom, whomsoever God wishes to misguide. But the effort has to start from home. We have to be very strong in our efforts and we have to be very wise and use tact and wisdom. That's very important for the parents. My message to the youth is that do not succumb to the pressures in society. Do not keep up with the Joneses. That's not what we're here for. We have, we're here to follow the Prophet Sallallahu We've given a pure, a pure way of life. Study it, read about it, learn it, and try and adopt it. Thank you very much. May God Almighty the Creator Allah reward you. Peace be unto you. you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode on the Dean Show. No time lost when you're sitting and you're learning something that can benefit your life. When you're hearing the good advice, you're putting off all the hip hop, mute, music and the rock music and all the other things up there if there are no benefit but when you sit and you take time to reflect over the creation of the heavens and earth what's my purpose of life where am i going when i die and you're beseeching the help of the creator of the heavens and earth because you can't do it on your own as one god and he sent messengers to guide us but how are you going to know what the guidance is if you don't ask the creator for the guidance and i'm just going to share before we end because we're here in Dallas, y'all, and one of my teachers is here, and he shared something real beautiful with me that just stuck with me. So I was listening to him, to a person of knowledge, and it stuck with me, it was something good, and hopefully you can be benefit from this good. He told me that we need to work hard in this life, filling our grave with good deeds before we visit the grave, because we're all gonna visit that place. And we need to work to please hard our Creator before we meet our Creator, and we need to work hard to disattach ourselves from this life before this life says bye-bye to us. And that is great ad advice that we can all benefit from because we're gonna be leaving this life as transitory and the hereafter is forever. Hellfire is real, paradise is for real, and we wanna shoot high. And that's for Jannah. So let's work hard to please our Creator before death overtakes us. And if you have any further questions, just visit us at thedeanshow.com every week and call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. Operators are standing by to answer your questions or even if you want to accept the way of life that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all the messengers of God live. They all submitted to God. They worship the creator, not the creation. You could do it too. Call us. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you. This is the